Hello folks and welcome. So I have a video here for uh, Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon. A lot of you folks out there are wondering, um, is there any place where I could get a used laptop, for instance, and place um, Linux Mint on it? And will all the goodies work? In other words, um, all the network card, uh, maybe a, a camera that is mounted on the, uh, on the laptop. So I'm going to show you something completely from scratch and also I'll touch base about upgrading the actual hard drive on it. And it actually happens to be a solid state drive. So I'm going to first start off by saying that none of my videos are um, over or excuse me under two minutes under two minutes. They all have chapters and timelines. I do encourage that you read my about section and also the community tab if you're trying to do searches on my hundred plus videos. There's some key tips in there for you. So in either either case, folks, welcome. So I have a camera turned on right now to um, a laptop, and I'll wave hello. That particular laptop, I'm going to give you the details on it, actually from Amazon. That's where I got it for $269. So this laptop has an i7. It has uh, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte solid state hard drive with Windows 10 on it. And what I did was I wiped out Windows 10 and put Linux Mint on it. Okay, just wanted to let you see the details in here. You know, you can get a lot of these uh, particular laptops. So that's an E7470. All right, now I'm going to minimize that and bring up the camera. So a lot of people are wondering if they can put these things on there. And I know my camera equipment is not that great, but uh, this is definitely Linux Mint 21 on it. And I also am just going to demo this really quickly, and uh, I'm not going to scare you to death, but uh, you're going to see my face in a second. I'm going to open up Cheese, just to let you see that the camera works. All right. Now what I'm going to do is shut the whole thing down, and I'm going to talk about everything that's involved. As far as, um, you know, if you're wanting to set up something like that on a Dell laptop, this again is the model number. It's a Dell Latitude 7470. I think I still have the page open. And there it is. That's a better description of that thing. Would you like that a little bit larger? There you go. All right. So that's what the laptop looks like. And again, I got rid of it. Uh, Windows 10 on it. It has a lot of amenities. Um, so some of the things that uh, is not denoted on there, there is nothing in the center of that laptop. But... More importantly, it does have some extra ports. You can see the ones on the back. There's two USB ports on the back and one on the side. I know it's hard to see. And then uh, it does come with a charging cord. All right, with all that stuff said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the laptop over. I'm going to close it and flip it over. I have the back off. And then I'm going to grab a hold of a screwdriver. I thought I had one laying here. I apologize. Give me a second. I'm actually going to remove the hard drive. All right, so that hard drive is located right here. This is actually the one I replaced. The original looked like this. Okay, this is a solid state drive. And um, so there's lots of different ways you can do this, but more importantly, if you are looking to upgrade that 512, this is a one terabyte. Well, I'll pull it out here in a second. It's just one screw after you take the back off. All right, and the battery is right here in case you need to replace that. Anyways, I don't know if you can see that. That's an SSD. It's a 980. It's a fairly new Samsung, uh, one terabyte. I don't know if you can see the 1T on there. But anyways, I went from a 512 to a one terabyte just by replacing this. Now there's a couple of different things you can do. Is it if you've already installed, let's say, Linux Mint on this stick and uh, you needed to maybe move your files over, then that's a little bit more expensive option unless you want to just do it by um, copying the personal files over to a separate thumb drive or hard, or hard drive. Or you can use a duplicator. That's a little bit more expensive option, that, but I do have one. It's located right here. So these devices are not cheap. They're over $100, but essentially what you do is you put the target device in there and the source in here. 
Even though that's a, that has two notches on it, this still works. This is an NVMe. And I can just plug this into the wall, literally. I know this is kind of hard to see on this camera, but I plug this into the wall and hit that button there. And then it starts a little percent, you know, 25% all the way to 100. The, the process takes about 20 minutes. But there's another option for you when you're um, wanting to replace these things in a laptop, for instance. Well, obviously, you've got an existing operating system on it. So you can uh, go into the uh, BIOS and turn on boot from a USB stick. That's an F2 setup. I know that's probably hard to do. Just take my word for it. It's F2 on this laptop. Uh, there, uh, different laptops, of course, are, have different uh, ways of getting into the BIOS. But you want to boot from your USB stick. And now you've got your Linux Mint bootable copy. In my case, mine is sitting on a USB stick that's about this size. If I can grab a hold of it, that's mine. Believe it or not, that's Linux Mint 21 on here. So I take that and I insert it into one of these USB ports. And uh, I might as well talk about some of the other features on here uh, after I talk about the uh, booting up. So basically it's F2. Make sure that you uh, select a boot from USB device. You'll see that option in the boot menu. And uh, that way you can install your, your Linux Mint, let's say on that chip, the original, the 512. But let's say you didn't want to do that. You wanted to right off the bat, you purchased yourself one of these. Uh, I think these are a little less than $100 now. And uh, that, of course, is added to the cost of this laptop. But still, you're going to end up with a one terabyte drive versus a 512. But let's say you went with this option. After you install this thing, you're still going to need a, an operating system on it, unless you've got a duplicator. If you don't have a duplicator, then again, you're going to be doing this manually. So you install Linux Mint 21 on that chip right there. It's that simple. Now, let's talk about what the amenities are on this laptop for that less than $300. There's an audio port here. I believe this is an SD slot, and you can actually disable that also in the uh, BIOS. And I will put the dummy plate back in there. There's a USB port. I'm not even sure what that slot is, but it looks like a, another card slot. And I'm not going to pull it out. Let's turn this thing around. It's got a, a regular Ethernet port. It's got an HDMI port. And um, looks like another, another port here for possibly a printer. Uh, USB, USB, power, and the other side is just uh, ventilation for that. But for less than $300, I'll open this up. It's not too bad of a laptop. So it's pretty simple to use. It's got the touchpad. You can, of course, add your own USB-based mouse. Pretty simple to do. Plug in a USB, one of these dongles, and you're ready to go. It does have some special keys on there. Maybe you can see this, maybe you can't. There is a, um, a start key or a windows key here. And uh, it also has function keys. So these things lit up in blue. I know you can't see those. So it does have a lot of amenities for 300 bucks. And I was satisfied with the product. But again, I, my, I chose to upgrade this thing from a 512 to a one terabyte. So it wasn't that hard. As in my case, I had already installed Linux Mint on it. All the drivers worked. I didn't have any problems with the network card. The camera was already turned on, but there is an option to turn it off in the BIOS. And you saw the camera, I brought it up on the screen earlier. And more importantly, with my case, all I did was just stick it in my duplicator. And 20 minutes later, I had the OS on there. Now, when you do something like that with a duplicator, I'm just going to give you some pointers. So, um, normally you will find Gparted also on the, um, the USB stick for your, um, your Linux Mint. So, GP. You would just um, open up your Gparted. If you are using a duplicator, a lot of times what it does is it duplicates the drive exactly the way it is. So, ma mainly what you need to do is change 
the size of the drive. And that e that's done easily through Gparted. You just have to be um, booted up with your Linux Mint bootable um, uh, installation media. Now this is a typical drive that has unallocated space and that's what you'll see also if you use a duplicator. So and let's say in my case I wanted to extend this out. I have an extra, just pretend this is one terabyte. So I would um, actually resize and now I have all this space to play with. So I can just, I can do it this way. I can even, what I did with that other laptop, I know I didn't open up a lot of menus to show you, but I actually reserved a hundred gigabytes on my, um, my one terabyte, a solid state NVMe drive on that laptop for some extra backup storage. And you can do that by creating two different partitions. Let me show you an example of that. Um, this will obviously is not a terabyte drive, so I'm going to reduce that down a little bit. And I'm going to resize that. Now I have 76 unallocated space. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new partition on that. And um, I'll call that extension for backup. Or backup uh, 4, whatever. Add. And then what I'm going to do is commit the changes. And this, uh, it's doing this live, by the way. This is a, a drive that I have plugged into this current computer, but I'm still using Gpart in the same fashion you would use on your laptops. And being that's a spinning hard drive, this takes a couple of minutes. So, but more importantly, I resized the drive here. Now it's uh, bigger than it was before. And more importantly, now I have um, also a secondary partition called backup 76 gigabytes that's how you would use gparted in uh, well in a quick fashion and again gparted is found on your linux mint bootable medium i use a usb stick maybe you use a dvd that doesn't matter so for that laptop again this is a known model that i actually install linux mint on it's 14 inches it has an uh, i7, which is an Intel processor. 2.6 gigahertz may not sound like much, but you know what, for a laptop, it's not too bad. Well, what I was really surprised was it had 16 gigs of RAM instead of the standard four or eight. And then again, you are getting a solid state drive out of it at the same time. And again, I chose not to keep Windows 10. I don't have any use for it. So anyways, um, there you have it. You may want to investigate that on your own. Okay. Thank you for watching, folks.